Um, since Raul Castro came in officially in, in 08, he has been trying to modernize uh, the Cuban economy. He's allowed the buying and selling of real estate, which wasn't allowed when we were there. You could only barter real estate. He's allowed the sale of motor cars, which is, may sound absurd, but there are no car showrooms in Havana or Cuba. And the price of a mid-range equivalent Chevrolet is marked at about $200,000. So if you're on $25 a month, it's a bit of a challenge to think you can own a car. Um, so the process has been very slow. Raul Castro, I think he's a pragmatist, and of course he made the deal with the United States. There were spy swaps and so on involved. But he recognized that with Venezuela teetering on the edge, he couldn't forever um, alienate the US and, and its important potential economic contributions. So what is the US bringing to Cuba now? And these are the important things. It's not necessarily the kind of official uh, big time investment you might think will, will be generated, because of course the embargo is still in place. So you know, Walmart cannot go and build a store in Cuba. Uh, you can't have a, an iPhone factory in Cuba. You can't have a, a, a JP Morgan Chase setting up a banking operation. None of that is permitted by the US side. Even if it were, it's very doubtful the Cubans would approve it. They're not in the business of allowing a kind of recolonization of pre, like pre-revolutionary Cuba when the US uh, was the main um, uh, presence in, in the US economy. But what is happening is, is something very important as well. Firstly, the visits. Um, the US is now, certainly if you include all the Cuban Americans who are visiting and have no limits on the number of times they can go, is probably second in the league table only to Canada. It's overtaking countries like Spain and the UK long ago. And I think the figures for this year uh, will probably show on people-to-people -people visits, this is non-Cuban Americans, probably 200,000 at least, uh, out of a total of 3.5 million tourists. And then the Cuban Americans go, some of them go almost every week. Uh, they're living in both places. And this is a unique asset that um, the United States has, is the Cuban American community. Two million, roughly, claim to be uh, Cuban American. So out of a population of 11 million, it's a very important, um, important segment. They are sending large amounts of money. They can send unlimited remittances, normally in cash. Uh, they send them via couriers. They send lots of equipment for the small businesses, the pizza pans, the strollers for their, you know, their cousins' babies, uh, the flat screen TVs, which of course they could never afford in Cuba, are all taken down by Cuban Americans. And the remittances, nobody really knows the figure, but it's certainly several billion dollars a year of income, effectively to Cuba, because of course they spend the money in Cuban stores, in, in the bed and breakfast, the hotels and so on. So it's a vital uh, source of income for, um, uh, for Cuba. So um, that's where I see the state of US policy. I, I don't think it's right to see Cuba and the US becoming warm, uh, chummy, backslapping partners anytime soon. Cuba remains a strange and a repressive country. 